I'm very excited to talk with you today as we continue this week on worship about worshiping God wherever you are. And I want to share a verse from Acts chapter 16. It's part of the story of Paul and Silas are in the Greek city of Philippi. And it was a great pleasure, a real pleasure, to actually be in the ancient ruins of that city when we went to Greece earlier this year to walk around the ruins, thinking about Paul and Silas going through those streets. And there's even a little thing that they call Paul's jail cell. Now, obviously, there's a lot of things when you go to holy sites that uh, from a, a score of one to five, uh, you know, how much do we really know? Not sure that Paul and Silas were actually in this particular little hole-in-the-ground cave-type cell. But it was cool to look at it and to think of that possibility in this story. And so in Acts 16, verse 25, it says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Uh, those of you who have heard me preach on this passage know that I think that's a hysterical line, because what were the prisoners going to do? They couldn't leave. They were chained to the wall. So, of course, they were stuck listening to Paul and Silas praying and singing Christian hymns, whether they wanted to or not. But part of what I admire about Paul and Silas is their ability to worship God, not just when they were in the synagogue, not just when they were in someone's house, but even when they were arrested and in prison, they could still find the ability to worship God because we can worship God wherever we are. Now, it's interesting, and I always find this funny, is that some people will tell me, well, I don't go to church, I don't go to worship, because I can worship God wherever I am, and I worship God the most in nature. And my response to that is always, well, it's good to worship God anywhere you go, and it's good to worship God when you're out in nature, God made it, after all. It's God's creation. And in creation, uh, that is actually God's first revelation. It's older than the Bible, um, is creation. And we see God's hand as we look around, which is something that Paul writes about in the early part of Romans chapter 1. And it's also expressed in the Psalms that the heavens are telling the glory of God. I went out early this morning well before the sun was up, just to look at the moon and Mars and several of the stars that were so beautiful. So you can worship God wherever you are. The question is, do you? <laughs> do you actually do that? Uh, or is that just an excuse that some people use to not gather with God's people on Sunday? And there is great value in worshiping in community. And that's what we see with Paul and Silas, where two or three are gathered, Jesus says, I'm there in your midst. We talked about that. And so we can worship God often very powerfully in community and in ways we can't when we're just with God in solitude. And the final thing I want to say about worshiping God wherever you are and why it's important to worship in community is, as I always tell the people who say I worship God in creation, is I, that's great, but you know, if you're sick, is a seagull going to come visit you? You know, if you just got home from the hospital, is a coyote going to bring you dinner? Probably not. There's great value in worshiping God together with God's people because that gives us a sense of belonging and connection that goes well beyond just worship.